Hello, this is the Trade Ideas Market Recap for Friday, September the 5th. My name is Barry Anderson. I'm the moderator of the trading room. This is the address to get into the room, and you can log in with your Facebook or your Twitter account. Uh, this is probably the last uh, video until, um, what date would it be? Probably Monday the 15th. I'm off next week for a big move from uh, Vancouver to Boston. And so I doubt, it all depends on when I get my equipment. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, the delivery and all that, but uh, more than likely I'll be off all next week. So let's uh, just take a look at some of the trades that I did today. And actually a pretty active day. Uh, the first trade, and before we do that, I just want to bring back the two strategies, one of, or the couple of the strategies that I used. And... Okay, there we go. Here are the here are the strategies that I use today. Uh, I use a, another one also, but these are the these are the main ones. Just want to point them out to you. And now the first one actually that I traded didn't come off this strategy, but uh, yesterday we had a one of our a star poster with his uh, great call of uh, CI, CISQ, and uh, so he had this one on his radar to begin with, and I can see why. You know, you take a look at the uh, the daily chart here, and this is yesterday's candle. And I'm sorry, this is yesterday's candle and this is uh, Wednesday. So it had it had a nice day here, kind of got through this, this, uh, all this stuff here. And then yesterday it got through here. So you can see that, you know, you got a, some resistance at 2681. Um, but for me, uh, certainly it could have been a good scalp opportunity. You know, I'm not, not going to necessarily make multiple dollars or anything, but it looked it looked decent. So. I decided to take the trade at 2688 and these are five minute candles and you can see that uh, this is the next five and this is so within 10 minutes it actually had uh, popped up to 2637 and I was thinking okay well <laughs> maybe we've got two in, uh, two winners in a row from uh, Ruiz um, again I was looking for maybe the uh, to get it up to this level here but it just didn't happen and I exited the trade on this candle here basically on a break even at we're right at 2688 and I can see that it's uh, still holding here so this is probably something that we can uh, you guys can watch on Monday just to see whether or not it has uh, uh, a pop from here just remembering that we'll probably get some resistance in this area here so you know if it closes around 2630 or so you've got 50 cents if that's good enough for you for a scalp then uh, by all means I would do I would be watching it now let's take a look at the second trade that I did and that this turned out to be pretty good Michael Kors KRS. Now, what happened here is that um, if you remember yesterday, well, actually, let me back up here. I should be talking about my swing from uh, from yesterday. That's working out quite well. So this is uh, AI. I don't have it marked here, but I'm in actually, or maybe it's the day before that I've got it marked somewhere. Here we are. Here's my buy at uh, 2713, the day before. And remember I did this one because they had announced the financing and so the stock got uh, you know this is a Wednesday closed at 28 to 41 and it opened uh, you know almost a dollar and a half lower and again because the financing usually upsets people who are in the stock they hate being diluted etc but you know when you take a look at this when I was taking a look at this here was the beautiful uh, uh, trend all the way up and then here's yesterday and so I thought that this could turn into a good swing trade. Once the news got absorbed and people got over their anger, uh, there's no question that this was in a strong trend up. So I decided that uh, I was going to swing this one. I said as long as it didn't break down through 27 that I would uh, uh, hold this. And that, let me just bring it back to today. That is what I've done. So you can see it's actually hit a high of 27.67. I think I'll still hold this. Uh, there's no real reason to sell it. And again, I'm in from 27.13. So a nice swing for me so far. Now, the same feeling. Now, I'm not going to swing this. For sure, I'm not swinging this one. But Coors, Michael Coors, uh, announced a, a financing also. So the same sort of thing. You can see here's where it closed yesterday at $80. And it opened, well, actually got down as low. I don't know if this was a, a true trade down here, but certainly down to $73. And but it opened what it opened at $76. So about um, about $4 uh, under where it uh, where it closed yesterday. So again, you know, people upset. The financing comes in, 
and I watched this activity here and I thought it had a decent what once, once it once the, on this candle here there's the red candle and it's is it pot came back and then this next green candle kind of gave me the confidence that uh, I could take the trade so I took uh, took it at 76.28. Now I have traded traded this one before, and it can be very very whippy. It's kind of scary. So I didn't take that many shares to be honest, because uh, you know I just didn't want to get whipped out of my position. So uh, in at 76.28, and immediately I took some profit at 76.49 in order to lock it in to make sure that if it did fall back down to my buy or a little bit under, I probably wouldn't get hurt too hard. So uh, kept it kept it through this too. It did dip down below my at my buy um, but it uh, it was holding pretty well and I ended up selling the second half at 70 uh, 76 69 it actually got as high as uh, 76 86 and I can see here that it's still holding pretty well but this is a little too um, uh, spready and whippy as I was saying for me usually so I'm not going to hold it well I, I'm out of the trade right now and I had no I had no feelings for, for holding this one a little bit longer uh, as a swing now again this is something that I would look at on Monday morning if I were here trading I would definitely be looking at this because again look at the gap that it has to fill and again once it gets absorbed the news and people get over their shareholders get over their anger about it um, you know if, if you take a look at the now this this daily is not as good as the other one of course because this was kind of in a downtrend here with a little pop yesterday but I'd be watching it you know just to see what happens now the next one was BP and uh, now I kind of blew this trade now BP was on our probably everybody's radar because of what happened yesterday you know I mean this uh, fell from 48 down to 44 uh, $44 and uh, again I think it was obviously more the court case uh, from from or the fallout from uh, the spill they had a couple of years ago. So uh, this is what knocked it down. So of course, you know, anytime you see this, you're always wondering. I mean, this company is obviously not going out of business, so you always wonder, is it going to have a balance at some point? So we were all watching it. I know certainly I was watching it, and. So here's where it closed yesterday at 44.92, and so it had a nice open. I mean, it uh, here, here's the pre-market. Uh, pre-market uh, this morning is here, so it had a very nice open. So it looked like it was going to start to recover. So I took the trade on this candle here. After this little pullback, these red candles, and then the green, and then this candle right here, I took the trade at 45.65. Uh, and watched it get uh what did it get up to actually got up to 45.79 and then on this candle here i you know i just chickened out uh, there's not no other word for it i just chickened out on this trade was hoping because you never know what could happen it, it, you know the, some more news could come out that uh, just pummels the stock and i didn't want to get caught i thought okay i'll take my little dime profit and, and move on but you can see that it uh, really did well after that and uh, it broke through 46 and Came back down 45.90 and was still on my radar. And so I decided that uh, I was going to take the trade if it could hold the whole number and then on any sort of pop. And so that's what I did. I took the trade at uh, 46.11. Took it, I think I took it right in this area here. And you can see it was it wasn't doing actually no that's wrong i took it i did take it right here and it fell back down to 4604 i actually i said in the room that if it certainly if it broke down through the whole number i'd be out of the trade and um but it didn't do that and it, it rebounded and it actually got as high as 4616 i thought okay maybe we're on our way well unfortunately uh this candle that it, it started to sell off and i i sold when it when it broke down back to that 4604 level i decided to take my uh, my loss so i took a seven cent loss there 10 cent gain there so i didn't really play this one very well but you know i would do it again i would just probably hold on a little bit more uh to, to this uh but this one i would definitely do again it just looked like it had that uh, look that it could keep going up now the next one was hog now hog came from where did hog come from hog came from this breakout uh five minute candle strategy that i have now Quite frankly, this is just the reverse of the balance, okay? When you see any one of these, look at HOG. So what, what this is looking at actually are shorting opportunities where stocks are just the reverse. These, these are stocks that are beaten up. So these are ones that look like they may be over, overbought. So when you look at this one, 11, 1106, 64.87. So let's just find out where 64.87 is. So right around here. So 
you know, it's the same thing. I, I, I got notified because I had uh, these four candles in a row up. Uh, has to be at least uh, three. And the, the it had risen uh, the correct amount in 30 minutes in terms of a dollar amount. So I started watching this. And, you know, I decided sort of took two strategies into play at, at once. I was alerted to it here and it didn't look like it was going to uh, be a short. It just looked too strong. So I, I, I waited for uh, the second break of the whole number. Um, you can see right here, it broke up to 65.11. And then on this candle, it came back down 64.97. And then it broke the second time uh, through the whole number. And I took the trade right here at 65, probably actually right there at 65.07. Uh, it's a strategy that I used to use quite a bit. I would watch stocks around the whole number. I would wait for the first break, and then I'd wait for the pullback. And I said that in the room very explicitly, that I wanted to wait for a pullback. On this candle here, I thought maybe I was missed it, and it was going to keep running. But uh, I did get the pullback. And you know what? If it keeps running, so be it. Uh, but I used to do something like this quite a bit. Wait for that first, uh, wait, watch the first break see if there's a pullback under the whole number and then catch it on the second break and a lot of times that worked very well probably when i get back um trading i i will uh, i will take a look at that strategy in a little more depth and uh, just see what's up with it so i took the trade here at um 6507 and it did very well uh get up to 6530 on the first half it made it all the way to what did it do 6541 all the way up to here or 6543 i guess and it it held the it held this area for quite a while uh but i did end up selling the second half at 6533 and i can see that it's it's back see there's about 45 minutes left in the market so it has come back a little bit but it did definitely drop i would definitely would have got stopped out right here there's no question but uh so not a bad trade based on first seeing it here uh, at 6487 uh, and not really thinking that it was going to be a short shorting opportunity again with with the market being uh, up today uh, I decided okay we'll we'll just uh, we'll ride we'll ride the trend and and then and then applying the uh, again uh, sorry uh, applying the whole number theory to it then the last trade was the same thing a uh, little bit different i'm sorry the same thing this was the bounce play esv and this worked out really well so uh, 46.79. So right, right about here, right about here is when I was alerted. So on these candles down. So I had it on my radar, but it didn't do anything. It didn't do the bounce, and it really did the bounce down here. But it was sort of, it was off my radar by that point. And um, but I, I think I told you yesterday what I what a lot of times what I do is I start to uh, just because I didn't take it the first time uh, I usually click on the stock and and see what's see what's up with it to see if there's anything happening and so I think I probably clicked on it right around here where it, right when it was right underneath the whole number 4691 and so I did the same thing you see how it um, popped up here uh, sorry about that this is um, 4703 and then it came back down and I took the trade on the second time it popped up through the whole number at 4708. Now it it uh, challenged me, it tested me a little bit because I, I had said that I was going to be out of this trade at 47, sorry, 4698. And um, the bid got to 4699 and literally another penny and I was, I was going to stop myself out of the trade. But I was lucky, I held on and uh, got rewarded really nicely. It uh, I sold half at 47.46 and the other half at 47.50. So it turned into be a really nice trade for me. Uh, and again, applied the two principles, uh, looking for the bounce and then waiting for the second break of the whole number. And it worked out very well. So that's it. Um, I'll uh, again the room will be open and uh, all next week so I encourage you uh, to uh, go into the room with some great uh, traders in the room and you should follow you can follow them along and I should be back in the room trading let me just bring up that data again on September the 15th so I will see you then bye bye